this episode is with Will Harper, and he is proud to be a highly sensitive man. Uh, we spoke about him rescuing his sister Barbara um, because of that talent of observing. Uh, him being uh, the director and producer of Sensitive the Untold Story, together with Diana Zinnikova and Elaine Aaron. And so much more. So what I'm going to do is to read his bio aloud, and then you can start enjoying this episode. So what do Oprah, Clint Eastwood, Alanis Morissette, and many more A-level artists have in common? Exactly. They had the opportunity to work with this American producer, Will Harper. Will is part of the Emmy Award winning production and content development company, the Global Touch Group, based in New York and Asia. Award winning hybrid transmedia producer director specializing in entertainment programming. Will Harper creates original entertainment and educational programming as well as design and produce media campaigns for brands looking to grow their market share by creating original high quality digital content and mixing in brand messaging. He also creates a style and a look for the brand and ideas which customize a specific message to a specific person in a specific moment through effective story building that magnifies the essence of the brand. He produced and directed many masterpieces together with Diana. Uh, Sensitive the Untold Story was created together with Diana and Elaine Aaron. And Sensitive and In Love, the first and only feature film about HSPs. And most recently, also a documentary which is called Sensitive Lovers a deeper look into their relationships followed soon after. Enjoy, here is Will Harper. All the time. So I can take a sip of my wine first? Yes, you can. What kind of wine is it? Italian or not? <laughs> no, it's it's actually Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> not just kidding. <laughs> okay. So. So that's my sister and I. Yeah. How old were you here? I don't know. I look like I'm about thirteen there, huh? Thirteen or so. Yeah. And that's my little sister. Uh, she's a very bright girl. She's highly sensitive, no question. She's also a Pisces. I'm a Pisces. Um, I became basically the father figure during the, those times because uh, we have different fathers. My mother's highly sensitive. Um, and uh, she kind of, her choices of guys weren't always the greatest, but she made it through. She took great care of us. She really did her job as a highly sensitive woman. Fantastic. She gave us a lot of freedom to do our thing. Barbara became, that's my sister's name, became a, an educator and a, uh, a high ranking um, government official for uh, taking care of children that are, have abusive or uh, aren't really taking care of them properly which is great and she did a great job of that she retired um she, my mom let me be the musician and the photographer and every time i wanted to go get an instrument she would do it so we're lucky we're lucky she got rid of those two guys that were hard heads and they weren't very sensitive to our uh, needs or whatever and uh, we made it through the gauntlet of life and we're doing great. Barbara's great. She's got a great husband. Uh, she's a chef. I'm, uh, I've traveled the world doing my thing and um, uh, directing and producing shows everywhere, shows and, and uh, documentaries. And uh, 
my sister is a great support for our mother who's in uh, the Bay Area. And I'm the one that's traveling around, running around. I'm the boy. So they allowed me to run around the world and do my thing. So <laughs> maybe uh, uh, that's OK. But my mom, highly sensitive. My sister, highly sensitive. Uh, and it was a great, a great combination to really give us the freedom to become whole and who we are. Yeah. So that's that picture. But that picture is for me. <laughs> yeah. I had a cool haircut then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I, you know, I think uh, the highly sensitive part. Um, I would jump out of myself to help others all the time. My sister one time fell into a swimming pool. She saw me dive into the pool. She jumped in and she couldn't swim. So my natural instinct was to save her. And I was young, but I'd never known about saving anybody, but I just automatically did it. And all my life, I've been that person when somebody's in trouble, no matter what, I'll come to the rescue, even if I really can't handle the situation i'll try to help so i think that's part of the trait yes um that you yeah. you jump out of yourself and you jump into trying to be helpful and i like that about the trait so yeah yeah you already observed that as a highly sensitive person <laughs> yeah yeah what uh so, uh, and in our culture, and you know, in America, um, sometimes we get a little bit uh, selfish. And uh, I've had those experiences where I haven't always been the greatest at, um, at doing everything correctly, or you know, whatever that that may be, like not taking care of people properly or um, things like that. I have not been the best at all of that. I sometimes tend to want to go and be on my own trail and, uh, and I'll move on. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've learned and I've learned a lot from accepting the highly sensitive trade and that it's some of that moving on and moving through the, the track of life uh, is okay, you know, like being being able to have your space is important, but being able to come back is equally important. So you don't take your space and go off and never return are uh, some of the things that I've learned in later life. It's like, it's okay to be on your own. It's okay to want to be alone, but return, return to forever, as they say, Chick Corea. Yeah. Um, and so I've gotten better at that. And Elaine Aaron, and uh, as a good friend and a dear, dear friend, has really helped me realize how to channel all that stuff and how to uh, become whole in a sense of taking care of me, but also returning and taking care of others. So I'm really happy that I've aged and I've learned to deal with my sensitivity in a way that's effective and good for all. So win-win for me and for my family, especially. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been named um, African-American, Negro, Black, colored, and you said that uh, it was confusing and at the same time, it wasn't confusing. Can you elaborate a bit? Uh, well, what that means is, in my during my time in America, uh, my my race has been named and renamed several times. So you get, get confused about well, what am, do I belong to this country or well, what, what's the deal? So when you've been renamed, when you come to a country, and that's it. But our group, we come or were brought to the place and they called us Negro, which in Spanish it means black, and they called us colored and they called African American. So they were trying to like, so whoever they are, the ones that are the namers, 
uh, they were trying to always put us into a category. But why was why weren't we just Americans? Yeah. Nothing wrong with just being that. That's okay. But uh, so it got confusing. And after a while, you just want to say, you know, throw up your hands and say, whatever. I'm just me. And if you can't deal with the skin color, uh, then you'll have to readjust. And that's kind of one of the reasons I moved out of the country. And uh, I love my country. I love the way it looks. I love all that stuff about it. But I didn't like that there was a group that sort of was making the decisions about who we were, or how we were supposed to look or walk or talk or comb your hair. And it really messes with you as a as a as a person of color, it will mess with you if you're if you're looking in a magazine and all you see is, are people of a, of a lighter shade of of life, um, you start thinking that, well, I'm supposed to be like that and look like that and behave like that. And really, really poorly, poor marketing. But that was the way it was. So you grow up confused. And fortunately, again, I have to go back to my mom. She started saying, don't worry about how other people or what they say. You have to just follow your trajectory and be who you are. Be nice to everybody, but stand up. And Nelson Mandela uh, told me to never kowtow. That was a big, that was another big thing that helped me kind of go, okay, thank you, Mr. Mandela. Uh, Diva, who we call, what we call them, how we call them. Because uh, you have to, you don't have to box people, you don't have to shoot, you don't have to beat, you don't have to use violence, but you can use uh, sort of kindness and, and just stand on your ground and be yourself. And it really does work. So, uh, so that's what that whole thing was. Confusion was, do I belong? Um, all the different names. Now, now, what am I? I'm just a human being. I'm Will Harper, the human being, highly sensitive, happy to be that way, and living life in the at the fullest right now. So, a lot of things have changed when um, uh, Dr. Elaine Aaron said hello, and you came in contact. And after a while, you were the one who said, "Let's make a documentary about high sensitivity." That's correct. Yeah, because I've never heard of it before. And I was going through some periods in my life where I didn't know, do I go see a psychiatrist, a psychologist? Uh, I feel like I'm a little bit lost. And why do I react like this? Why am I so uh, emotional? I deep, I deep think, deep dive into thought. I, um, uh, I'm overwhelmed easily. All the things that uh, the acronym is about. Uh, the the um, the does acronym deep thinkers uh, overwhelmed yeah uh, pathetic sensitive to subtleties I was going through all that but I didn't know what why I thought I was off I thought I was the one that was you know too deep too what the heck and then I met her and when I saw the book and I saw the cover and I read the forward and then I got into the book more I said. Thank you, whoever led me to finding her, um, or whatever it was, the force. Um, thank you, because that opened the door. And I never looked back. I, they're not, I'm not saying that therapy and all that stuff is uh, something you shouldn't do, but I really didn't need it. <laughs> Maybe I need it now, but I didn't need it. And uh, I feel like I've adjusted well to to being uh, uh, balanced. And uh, the balance has come from reading, studying the highly sensitive and accepting the trait and accepting the way I feel and, accept, and, and trying to get other people to accept some of the things that I go through and hopefully get them to go, it's not about them, it's about me needing some space and it's not, that I'm upset with you or whatever. So um, 
she's the one that gave me the guidance or her research and her study is the one that gave me the guidance. Seeing that book cover, reading the four, like I said, and then wanting to do something that maybe a lot of other people might want to hear about because there's a lot of people in the world going through the same thing um, is what jump-started and kick-started <laughs> literally the movie or the film. Yeah, so I'm really happy that I, uh, I saw that. And that's part of being highly sensitive. You see things, you kind of look at them a little bit different and deeper. And uh, it was one of the things I thought would be worth sharing with the world. And we did it. And people like Alanis Morissette jumped in. Uh, people came to the door and said, hey, I want to be a part of this. So it was a movement. Uh, Elaine doesn't like to call it a movement. And it's not really a movement. It is an innate trait. It's a scientific reality. Um, but yeah, so I pinpointed something. Elaine thought it would be a good idea and um, went for it. And here it is, it's still playing. People still, people, you know, the way I looked at it is that people will be born, 20% of the population uh, will continue to come to life every year. There we're going to be 20%, there's always going to be 20% born that are highly sensitive. So that's that tool or that film, that spokes uh, media will always uh, help somebody. And the comments are fantastic. It's one of the most fulfilling pieces of work I've ever done because people tell me all the time how it's changed their life, how they feel blessed and good to know that they're okay <laughs> and you are okay highly sensitive is a great trait and we're lucky to have this highly sensitive innate trait in our um, global community yeah so thank you so very well, happy i found you laying here yeah well thank you very much for listening to your intuition and uh, actioning on it that's, that's really wonderful. That's the, the intuition. I guess it's the sensitive to subtleties. I just saw, I, you know, I saw the book and, uh, and the bells went off and the lights went off and the light, we lit the light. Yes. So yeah. Here Excellent. we are talking about it five years later. Yeah. So you, you, uh, your life has really changed. You, you, um, uh, work with so many, like you said in the, in the text uh, um, below the video, with um, uh, legend uh, muggles in the entertainment world, and now you were mm -hmm. now you live in the Philippines, and um, that that's a huge transition. Mm -hmm. well, how is Say that? that. <laughs> um, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, that, that, that transition happened because I met a lady named um, Gina Lopez, who's a highly sensitive person. She owns ABS-CBN, which is, was a big network uh, uh, conglomerate here in the Philippines. And she brought me over to do a series with her called um, G Diaries, which was uh, advocacies and which was uh, looking at how to save the, the environment and help people. That's what Gina was all about. So she was definitely a highly sensitive, high sensation seeker, um, motivator, in, innovator. She passed away two years ago and we lost a really good, highly sensitive person. I'm glad we did a body of work together, but I, I'm still here. And I met my wife here, Jane, and um, uh, she's a highly sensitive one too. Yeah. And we're doing uh, our thing. The only reason I haven't been going back and forth to the States in the last year so much since the highly sensitive men's conference is because of the pandemic. But we're able to do things. The people here are great. You have to adjust to things, you know, being from my cultural background. But that's being sensitive, adapting and being able to see other people's needs and feelings in another culture 
is a part of global uh, hugs. Yeah, definitely. So how is high sensitivity uh, yeah. perceived in the Philippines? Fine. Uh, I mean, they're they're very talented people in the culture. Uh, they're they're very emotional. They're uh, very caring. So there's a lot of deep. Sometimes the deep thinking is really deep to the point to where, it's, it's, you know, wow. Um, uh, so it's. Uh, Gina thought that the whole culture, Filipino culture, was or is highly sensitive, and that but. It's not, I don't think that's correct because it's still going to be 20% uh, of it, of the culture. Yeah. But it's, um, it's okay because people are, a lot of people are very friendly here, very happy, very, even in adverse conditions, sometimes they're lifting and they're trying to be lifting. They're the caregivers or caregivers of the world. You see Filipinos all over the world that are in hospitality. And they sing great, so there's a there's a there's something to it. And you, what it's taught me is how to tone down, being somewhat uh, aggressive with work and stuff like that. They tend to pull back, and uh, so you know you have to adjust to it like that. But it kind of calms you down and makes you think about taking some time off and going to the beach instead of just work work workaholic like we are sort of a lot in America. Again, not putting down my uh, yeah. my motherland, but um, it's the question was how am I adapting and just why. Yeah. But I it's a little warm. I love and I miss my San Francisco. I love that place. And it's the weather is great. And uh, but it's going through its changes and um, not all of them are great. So we have some fixing to do, and uh, uh, the highly sensitive ones there will be the ones to pay attention to because they see it. Yeah, yeah. So when you talk about high sensitivity with uh, the people in the Philippines, what kind of uh, responses and reactions do you get? Uh, they 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 go they actually they go wow that's that is me that that's how I am that's how my son is that's what it's called so they go like that they because they haven't read the book they don't know about it just like I didn't know about it just like a lot of us didn't know about it until we did the show now the documentary is around and people are starting to see it and the word is spreading and it's making people not only in the Philippines but men and people in Spain and uh, Italy. Uh, because a lot of the guys in uh, in those places were macho, but now they're starting to grasp it, just like in the Philippines. It's kind of a macho society, you know, the men. Uh, but they're starting to go, okay, there's nothing wrong with being called highly sensitive. It's actually okay. Even Elaine used to say, um, uh, the, uh, maybe the name naming it sensitive wasn't quite the the right call. But you know what? get over it it's okay being sensitive doesn't mean you're soft and you're weak and you're a wimp it just means you know you're paying attention to things more nothing wrong with it and people when they meet you and get to know you they'll see how intellectually astute you are they'll see that you have vision they'll see that you are uplifting and it'll change their perspective of being an, an on how you sit or being hostile, or having that we work can work together the 2080 can work together in a, a great way. The balance is just fine. Like the cultures balance, the racial balance, we can work, we can work together. And that's the beauty of this world. I don't know about Mars yet. They're still up there, yes, jumping around. Uh, okay, so working with those guys, what you'll find out when, uh, after you get used to the, to the celebrity aspect of it and you get over that and you see that oh these are just people like me uh they just uh are more public uh it really is a nice uh place to be 
it's a nice, it's, they're, they're not, they're, it's a good group to be around, especially the ones that have really made it big uh, in the public eye. Um, they're not, their egos aren't as big as the ones that are climbing. And so you really can have some really good, get some good insight because just like traveling the world, you go to different countries, you live there for a while. If you don't just go jump in for two weeks on a vacation and go back and you go live there, you really learn some new things about how you can be as a person and a giving person and, and caring. And talking to people like Oprah, who's met thousands of people, talks to them, teaches them. Um, same thing, Clint Eastwood. He's been around the world. He's been with many people. Um, Nelson Mandela. So each one of those people, you get a message from. Uh, and you can take that and put it into the fabric of your personality. And, and you can take away a lot. And I'm going to end up doing a book, uh, basically, with little anecdotes about each of those situations and people I run into and what they said that I thought was a great, highly sensitive one-liner. So you can kind of pick that book up and use it when you get frustrated about uh, your, yourself and find out that all of them have gone through something and life is not always so um, ro all roses, you know. And Alanis Morissette, you heard it on, on when she spoke. It's, um, yeah. It was tough for her. And she sang about it and she was angry about it, but she's overcome. Because again, she found Elaine's book and she found Elaine Aaron and Elaine's research has really helped guide her. Now she's got highly sensitive children and she's uh, not Elaine, but um, uh, Alanis Morissette. So she's a celebrity, been in front of thousands of cheering, crying young kids. And look at, look at her. She's an orator now. She's a great speaker. She's, um, so the aging, highly sensitive person with good guidance from parents um, uh, can really blossom. So if you can catch that highly sensitive vibe early, um, whether they become celebrities or just become regular folks in the society, whatever that regular means, but you can, if you're a good parent to them, you can give us, uh, highly sensitive people, a real um, boost to get out into the world and do it uh, with love and care and help change how things are in a sometimes dismal situation with the environment or with the pandemics or with uh, um, uh, violence or all that stuff. So we're an important bunch and um, I guess going back to your question, is it a talent or is it something to deal with those people? Uh, the, the celebrities, no. It's just they're good people and um, they are just get paid a lot <laughs> and they have an insight. Uh, Oprah has a real insight on teaching. That's what she is. Um, and a lot of them, Mandela spent a lot of solo time. He's a highly sensitive man, very caring. I was a very caring man. Um, uh, yeah, the highly sensitive um, actors and musicians, you can really hear in their music. You can really see it in their, in their faces, like John Legend, like Lenny Kravitz. Um, man, the, the, with the words they sing and the songs that come out, that's, that's what a highly sensitive can do and uh, they a highly sensitive person can really when they in, in the, the acting area they can really tune in to the character and they're not acting they become that's what deep thinking can do for you you can become and then you can still be rational when you come out of it as an actor and you go back i, I don't even like using the word actor there's there's it, there's something a deep there's a deeper name it should be coined for what that job is. Anyway, I love celebrities. They're fun. Yeah, yeah they spread the word. They, they spread the word. So uh, take a listen. Even the comedians, even when comedians are making jokes, listen, those jokes aren't really 
you might laugh, but it's not a joke. They're making some real sense about how to behave and, and to look at behavior. So. Yeah, a deeper message, yes. So um, what do women need to know about a highly sensitive man? Uh, I think what a woman needs to know about a highly sensitive man is like, that if they need their space, it doesn't mean that they don't love or like you. They just need to go and do their thing. And a highly sensitive man, they like to work. They love their work and they get deep into it sometimes. Um, now also, I think that uh, what they should know is when they see a highly sensitive man, man cry, it doesn't mean that they're soft. Uh, it's just an outlet. Uh, a man so, cries. Uh, don't don't take it as a um, as a weakness. Don't take it as a, being soft. Take it as a, just just a release. It's an outlet. And uh, give the guy some some room to wiggle. Uh, you'll be you're in good hands with a highly sensitive partner. I think uh, as long as they have to grips with that the highly sensitive trait and they understand what it is. If they don't, if any man or woman don't, doesn't understand it, it's going to be, it can be a rough ride and you can really feel lost. Um, but once you get, grab it and you find the tribe and you can talk, and I say tribe, I mean other highly sensitive people, you can connect, you can click, uh, and you can join communities and hear them talk, man, it's, then the flight is on. Then those wings you see on my logo, uh, come to life and you can get on board, get on that wave, ride it and uh, don't look back. Just just keep keep on going. Life is short. Better enjoy it. Yeah. Wonderful message. Thank you so much for your work and uh, all the other beautiful things that you do in the world. And keep me updated about the book. And thank you so much for all the insightful messages. Well, you're welcome, and thanks for doing this and putting the word out. And uh, hopefully, we'll see us all sharing more films and books and and summits and workshops, so that more people can get on it and everybody can find a way to get along with the highly sensitive and the non-highly sensitive, because it's a balance, good balance. Yeah. And thank you to Elaine Aaron and to. Uh, my wife, Jane, who keeps me in a nice place of um, trying to understand the sensitive trait. So, thank you. And thank you. I'm Will Harper, and I'm a highly sensitive man of color. I'm proud of it.